welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. Uh, before we get started with the, uh, showing you these two offenses that I think you'll find very interesting and your backgrounds are terrific, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, course that we're uh, going to start in early November. Uh, it's called Measuring Basketball Performance. We've done it before on Udemy, but that was by video. This is different. We're going to do it with a live class. The eight classes uh, and uh, uh, once a week for a period of eight weeks. And these classes will be uh, on the go to meeting uh, so that we can uh, talk to each other. Uh, I will lecture on each segment. They're the same segments that are on Udemy, but I believe that this will be a lot more detailed than uh, that particular course, and that's why I want to do it. I've been wanting to do it uh, for some time. Uh, so, uh, you know, take a look. I'll give you some brief information to, today, but uh, much more will be coming to you over the next few days, maybe weeks, uh, but I'll cover just a couple things. One, uh, one is that it's an hour long, 45 minutes of lecture, 15 minutes for questions and talking and discussing uh, anything. The date and time are not set yet, but it will be around the weekend of November 13th. It could be on Saturday, or Sunday, both of those would be morning times. Uh, or the third option is Monday evening. Uh, I want to let people that are signing up uh, to help me decide that. And we can vary them. We might do one one week and uh, another time so that we have the least amount of conflict. And if we do have a conflict, I'll work that, uh, that out with you. I've not determined the price yet, uh, but we will soon, and I'll give you more information on that as we go along. Uh, I'd really like to see a lot of people take part in this because I don't know how you can really expect to move forward in this profession uh, without having a background. There was a time when you didn't need it. But it's getting now where you're going to need it. The owners want it, management wants it, the league wants it in the NBA and in conferences in college. It's going to dribble down into to high school. Already you're seeing companies that are willing to send the films and uh, almost provide you with a box score to go through and uh, do that work for you. Uh, so, um, I think you need to be aware of it. Don't, don't, don't be, be, be the guys that get, you know, come in last. You want to come in first. Well, these two offenses that I want to talk to you are very interesting. Uh, they have uh, similar backgrounds and they have similar um, methods of play. Um, but um, they are basically two. One is the triangle, and the other one is Dick Mata's offense. Uh, both of those offenses were started maybe 60, 70 years ago, uh, and, uh, but they had tremendous success in college and in the NBA. So I'd like to start uh, I'll give you a little background of each one, and then I want to go and show you basically uh, what that what uh, the offense consisted of. I can't go into it in any depth, but I can show you enough so that you can see the similarities in these two. Uh, first of all, the triangle. There is no doubt in my mind, and I don't care what the media says or what other coaches say or what. The most powerful offense in the history of the NBA is the triangle with Phil Jackson coaching it. 
uh, the background on it is Tex Winter actually uh, started it. Uh, in college, he wrote a book called The Triple Post Offense. That is the triangle offense. It became the triangle when it became, went into the NBA. He wrote the book, though, called Triple Post uh, Offense. Uh, what happened with this growth was that uh, Tex Winter was the assistant for the Chicago Bulls. He was obsessed with getting the, the triple poster triangle, we'll call it the triangle from now on, into the Bulls offense. He had the ear of Jerry Krause, but the coaches that were hired may have tried it, but they didn't get into it. And this frustrated uh, Tex. And then they hired an assistant or Doug Collins by the name of Phil Jackson. Well, Phil was basically that kind of a coach uh, in the CBA when I coached against him. And uh, when he went to Chicago, you know, Phil is a very, he's like a sponge when it comes to basketball. He wants to learn constantly and still does. Um, but when he got around Texas, it was like a marriage made in heaven. Um, and they and they went through that triangle and triangle and triangle, and lo and behold, Collins left the team, and Jerry Krause hired Phil Jackson, and the rest is history. Eleven NBA championships with two different teams. Uh, it's unreal, uh, and always running the offense basically that I'm going to show you. Now the other offense doesn't have a name like that. Uh, that offense was Dick Mata's offense. Some of you don't, may not even know he existed. He was a tremendous coach. And at the time he was coaching, uh, and his teams were, uh, you know, completely uh, uh, fearful for the rest of the, the league. The irony of this is that when he retired, to his two protégés, one who had, both of them had played for him, but one had also assisted for him, took over at Utah and kept the offense going. But Mata is interesting. Mata never played basketball. He was a wrestler in college. When he graduated from college, he was a, became a middle school uh, teacher and you could get a little extra money if you coached something and he they asked him if he wanted to coach basketball he said he would he went to a uh, clinic and you have to know Dick he's a very meticulous guy he sat there and got this offense and he put it all together I mean he was he got he just went over it and over it, talked to the coach I mean he he put, he, he had an offense, but it was an offense for middle school uh, players. Well, on that middle school team was a player by the name of Phil Johnson. Phil and Dick moved up through the levels together. Phil went to eighth grade, Dick went to eighth grade. Phil went to high school, Dick went to high school. Phil graduated. Uh, Dick got a job uh, as a junior college coach. Uh, that junior college became a Division I coach. Uh, Phil had gone to a college, uh, Utah, uh, but was unhappy. He and Mata got back together at Weber State. They hired uh, Dick with this same offense for the Chicago Bulls. It's like a fairy tale story. Phil goes with him. Uh, and on that team was Jerry Sloan. So that's how their triangle uh, came together. But it, it's amazing when you think that all of this was built around a, a middle school offense, and they never and Dick never changed it. Dick, Phil, and 
uh, Jerry, when they t went into Utah, they made some adjustments. One of them was because of John Stockton, it went from a two guard front, which I'm going to show you, which Mata uh, ran uh, so that they could kind of show, up, show and take advantage of uh, John uh, Stockton. Uh, so that's the history behind these two. Uh, you're going to find that there's, they're somewhat similar uh, in the concept that they uh, worked, worked around. So I think best now for us to go uh, to, the, uh, to the board and I'll show you briefly, but I want to warn you, I cannot go into, I'm just going to show you a skeleton of each one. This, these aren't my offenses, though, uh, you know, Dick Mott is the guy who got me into the NBA and I worked with him. I know, I know his offense. I don't know as well the Utah offense. Uh, and so what I'm going to give you is just a, a kind of a framework. If you are, if you see something you like, then you can get Tex Winner's book. Just go to Amazon, type his name in, and he has a two or three, maybe even more books there. Mata, I don't, to the best of my knowledge, there is no books. You would have to come to me, and I would have to send you to Utah to, uh, to see Phil Johnson, um, because I'm not going to pretend that I know. I know his. I know the offense pretty well because I worked with him. But uh, I, I am not an expert on it. Phil is. Phil Jackson is. Phil Johnson is. So let's go to the board now. Well, let's take the triangle first. Uh, normally, if no one's fooling with it, uh, it's a two-guard front, two wingmen, and a low post man. Uh, and basically, what they do is, uh, and this is very simplistic right now, they hit the wing, and that guard, the near guard, goes into the corner. This sets up the triangle. These two people move into this position. He comes down the lane uh, just a little bit. Now, what happens next is determined by what he does with the ball. And I'm going to show you three things that he can do, but it isn't like it's a call. It can be, I'm sure. But mostly, they go by where the pass and cuts are made. Um, and now I'm going to, uh, to uh, show you th those, those particular um, uh, movements. Uh, but I want to... I want to show you this first. Um, they can cut anybody in the corner. This guy can come down here. This guy can go over here into the corner. The postman can go into the corner. When you see it on TV, well, when Phil was coaching it, and you see it on TV, you're going to think they're, they're running all kinds of different things, but they're not. They're just moving people uh, into those spots. Uh, I, I'm not sure how they call that or, or determine that even. I get, get the feeling from talking with Phil that uh, a lot of times he might what, what we call script and say, you know, at a timeout, I want you to run uh, near guard to the corner the first time, second, that kind of thing. But it looks to me like a lot of times the players kind of make those moves uh, by themselves of who goes where. Uh, and so if you, you could have anybody in the corner, you could have anybody in the post, you could have anybody there. But here's what happens. When the ball goes into the post, this man in the corner makes a back cut. A lot of times they get, get uh, nice shots off of that. They want the postman to work. This guy will kind of come around it. Kind of looks sometimes like a, almost a fake screen in there, but the one he wants to make is this guy down here. This guy pulls this man in, and then he breaks out 
this keeps it very cleared out. It's difficult to trap their postman. That's one option that this man has. The second option he has is this. He could throw the ball to the corner. If that happens, uh, he cuts through normally. They have a little different wrinkle once in a while. Uh, cuts through. Uh, the postman will set the screen. This is a very tough screen to defend. If you tell me about it, because I've had to do it. Um, it really is, because if you start to go over that pick, it, this guy can just take it right down the baseline. So you almost have to play so that he can't take that baseline. And then it's, you know, that screen with a big man, like when Shaq was with him, that's hard. It's really hard. Uh, so it's a good, a good part of the play. The weak side is a little, I've seen so many things over there, I don't want to draw up any uh, thing. Uh, but they do have, uh, uh, you know, things that they do on the weak side. Usually this is started by this guy passing back and then they go into some things. But a lot of times I've seen them actually reform the triangle on this side when they do that. They're very good at that. Phil's teams were excellent at it. Um, the teams that run trying to get guys to run the triangle now in New York, not so good. Uh, I don't know. It must hurt uh, Phil to see some of it. Uh, now, when they have a postman, they tended to go in here a lot when, when they had Shaq. But when they had Jordan or Kobe and no postman, this is what they like to do. Come back to the weak side. Then they set kind of a loose double screen down here. Actually, when they draw it up in the book, it, it, they don't even draw it as a double screen. But in reality, that's what is happening in the game. And then these two guys have a two-man uh, two play here. This guy, I mean, they're breaking over here. Uh, and they can pass it and go around. This guy can step out and set a screen and roll, pass and cut down the middle and out. Uh, you know, they just play it well. You put uh, Michael Jordan there or Kobe Bryant there, or those two could play out here. You know, it's a, it's a tough defensive situation. Now that's the skeleton of the triangle. They do a lot of other things. You, you know, you've got to sit down with a film if you want to find, find out. I'd get Texas book if I were you. If, if uh, you, um, by the way, uh, my first year as a high school coach, uh, I used the Texas book. It was called the Triple Post Office. I ran it both, uh, I was only in high school two years, but I ran it both years. Uh, but I, 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 I won't even try to tell you that I could run it like Phil and, and Tex uh, could run it. Uh, Mahler's offense. Now, he also used the two-guard front, but he put the high postman, the postman up uh, on the uh, free, free throw line. Mata did not like to call plays. He very seldom called a play. So everything, all of the, the recognition had to come visual by the players themselves. If the guard hit this wing, the postman who always followed the ball, much like we do in the, the um, um, uh, cut one, uh, he, he would pass. When they saw him go through, that set up this simple little uh, play. He slipped down. They could feed him here. And if they fed him, this was a kind of a split between these two guys. Uh, but uh, basically, most of the time, the guy would go and he would stand right here. Uh, and then, if they reverse the ball, screen down, and they ran stuff off of it. They got pretty good at this. 
Oddly enough, when they when Dick first came to the NBA, they got great shots off of just that. So that was one option, not called. This is another option. If he passed and went away, then he would circle down to this position, the weak side guard, with the help of the high postman, would set up and run a cut off of him. If either one of them got it, they would hit the, the uh, high postman, and then they would run like a floppy back there. The next option, this is the one that's in the cut series. Uh, and I, this, this is drawn, this is, we, put, we use it exactly like Mata drew it up and, uh, or ran it all, all those years. I, I didn't change one iota and had a lot of success with it. They'd come down and instead of hitting the wing, he hit the high post that automatically told the rest of the team they're in what Mata called automatic um, screen, go across the top of it, go down the lane, weak side screen, and cut out. And of course, they could play their, you know, uh, their games in it. Uh, this is what Dick Mata drew up in that clinic, and and gave to his uh, seventh grade team. And uh, one of these guys here was Phil Johnson. And then, and, and when he went to the Bulls, this guy was Jerry Sloan. And those two guys ran this offense, moving it to a one guard front uh, for 20 some years. Phil and Tex ran the triangle for that long. Uh, in the NBA. Uh, so you see, th these are not complex things, uh, but they got very good at it. I mean, both teams, Mata's team, Mata was a very strong teacher, uh, a terrific teacher on the floor. Uh, during a game, not so much. Um, but on, on the practice floor, he was terrific. I mean, it was, it was like watching a, a genius uh, uh, in practice. It was very interesting. And of course, Ma, uh, Phil and, and Tex are the same way, you know. These are people that really uh, professionalized basketball in the NBA. Um, you know, they, they took it to another level. I hope that we got somebody coming up that's going to take what we got now to another level. That's what you have. Uh, very interesting. You can learn from it. You can probably find articles on Mala. Um, you know, he's one of the top coaches in the NBA. He won over a thousand games. Uh, won an NBA championship. Not as many as is. Uh, Phil did. Phil knows him. Because, uh, Phil knows the Sloan, Jerry Sloan and Phil because they played in the finals, one of the greatest finals, like you know, of all time, uh, when um, Jordan made a shot right at the buzzer uh, to win the whole thing. So that's it for today. Uh, take a look at, uh, take some thought about that course. It'd be very good for you. Thank you.